What's up, guys? It's MB Boxing. I just finished up watching Josh Taylor versus Jack Catterall 2. And this was a 12-rounder in the super lightweight division. And this fight was Saturday, May 25th from the First Direct Arena in Leeds, United Kingdom. And this fight was broadcasted on the zone as well as on the ES on, on the ESPN app. And in this fight, Jack Catterall was able to get a unanimous decision victory and get some vengeance and revenge, obviously defeating uh, Josh Taylor in their rematch here. Um, personally, I scored this bout 115-113 in favor of Jack Catterall. Obviously, I agree with the ultimate outcome of Catterall winning on points. However, I do think that the judges' scorecards were a little off. They had it 117-111 twice, which I kind of don't see. And then they had it 116-113 um, also in uh, Jack Catterall's favor. 116-113 is obviously much more plausible. 117-111 is only giving Josh Taylor three rounds, which is kind of iffy, um, considering there were multiple like moments in this fight where, Cat where excuse me, Josh Taylor won um, good sequences of rounds, and Jack Catterall was kind of looking tired. So just to break down my scorecard and how I saw it, 115-113. First round I gave to Catterall. I thought he landed some good left hands. However, the second round I thought that um, Josh Taylor was able to bounce back. Um, and he was a bit more aggressive in that round than Jack Catterall. And then, however, in the third round, this was a real toss-up of a round. Uh, I think I could have went either way, to be honest. However, I did give that third round to um, Jack Catterall. This is one of those rounds that, in my opinion, really could have went either way. Uh, and it was definitely one of the swing rounds in this fight, but I just edged it to Catterall um, overall just based off of his solid boxing, but it was a close round overall. Then round number four, I mean, really, rounds four, five, and six were great rounds there for Jack Catterall. He was boxing very well. Taylor kind of looked like he was slowing down a bit from his aggressive from his aggressive style earlier on in the first three. Um, so then after the first six, I had Jack Catterall up pretty big, and sorry if you could hear my dog barking in the background. Um, but yeah, after the first six, I had Catterall up 59-55, um, taking some of those rounds with his good boxing skill. But then from round seven all the way through 10, I gave them all to Josh Taylor. These were rounds where Jack Catterall was much more tired. He started to slow down. His hands were dropping and Josh Taylor was just a bit more aggressive in those rounds. And he did a very, very solid job of just putting the press, putting the pressure overall on Jack Catterall, um, and really out of those out of that sequence of like four rounds um, that I did give to um, Josh Taylor, uh, the ninth round would be a swing round in my opinion. That was actually a pretty close round. Um, Jack Catterall did a very good job early and late with some decent combinations. However, Taylor had a really good campaign in the middle of the round, but I just gave it to Josh Taylor, but it was very, very tight. Then in round number 11, rounds 11 and 12, I gave them both to Jack Catterall. However, the 12th round was extremely close. Uh, round 11, though, was a great round um, in the end for Jack Catterall, considering that Josh Taylor at first had a good first minute and a half, and then in the last minute and a half, um, Josh Taylor got clocked with a huge left hand um, that really buckled him back into the ropes. Then he got caught with another left hand later, so that was a good Catterall round. And then the 12th and final round, um, this was a round that was pretty competitive since Josh Taylor was able to move forward, be more aggressive. However, I thought Catterall landed slightly the cleaner shots. So overall, that breaks down to a 115-113 scorecard. And this goes into the question, what is next for both fighters? Obviously, first, um, obviously, we could expect the trilogy out of these two. And I would not um, be mad at it overall, obviously. I mean, I just wouldn't. I mean, it's a, it's a great rivalry, a great fight. And... I mean, personally, I just wouldn't mind seeing that. However, if they both don't um, obviously have a trilogy in their next fight or in the near future, we definitely could expect to see Jack Hatterall fight, um, obviously, for one of the world titles soon. He's highly ranked by, I believe, all four sanctioning bodies. And, um, I mean, he's obviously a very high-level fighter, beating, obviously, the former undisputed champion at the weight class. Uh, currently, he's ranked number five by the WBC, number five by the WBA, um, number three by the IBF, and um, number six by the WBO. So he's ranked highly, almost top five in all four of the main sanctioning bodies. So we could possibly see him fighting in, in a big eliminator or possibly get a world title shot um, sooner than later. Um, 
Yeah, after getting a big win like this. But then as for Josh Taylor here, uh, losing here for the second time in his career, now 19-2, and two, the former undisputed champion falls to. Um, obviously for Josh Taylor, a trilogy could be in the cards. However, if not, we could definitely see him take on someone else who's ranked top 15 or top 10 in his next comeback fight if he doesn't obviously have the trilogy. So overall, Jack Hatterall defeats Josh Taylor via unanimous decision to improve his record to 29-1 and and to get some revenge and to possibly set up a rematch, or excuse me, a trilogy. And yeah, that's really it. I'm MB Boxing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.